Hello friends. In this particular video tutorial, we're going to deal with uh, mathematical reasoning. This particular part has uh, very less to do with the uh, analytical concept as you have been doing uh, as you have been doing uh, since your childhood. This is more on uh, the part of the logic and the theoretical aspect which we we'll, uh, discuss uh, at uh, the level of higher mathematics. So, to follow this particular chapter, I request you to take a time to uh, understand the concept very clearly and go through as many examples as you can. So let's first of all look into what are mathematical statements. Uh, we give general statements uh, in our speech in our day to day life but the, defin the mathematical definition have a special characteristics that they are mathematically acceptable statements only if they are true or false but not both. They can't be like statements uh, that it may rain tomorrow so uh, because it may or may not rain so it's neither true nor false so it cannot be like the statements like that so uh, for example we have a uh, the we have an example of mathematical statement here that 2 plus 2 equals to equals 4 so this particular uh, is a statement and it's true as we know from our mathematical classes therefore this particular is a mathematical statement even if we had written that 2 plus 2 is equal to 3 even then it would have been a mathematical statement because we know uh, for sure that it is a false statement so we know for sure that these two particular things represent a mathematical statement The uh, important point in this particular statement is that we are often required to find the negation of the statement that is just the opposite of what we meant to say. So this is uh, to do this uh, first of all uh, uh, let's see the formal definition the denial of a statement is called the negation of the statement. The This part is pretty uh, easy I guess. Let's say if we, if we have a statement P which uh, says that Delhi is a city. So the negation of P will say that uh, Delhi is not a city. It's as simple as, you, as, as it gets. Like in your mathematical classes. Next is, uh, doing, uh, uh, next is the compound statement uh, from the analogy of uh, as that in the English classes. We have uh, a statement which is made up of two or more statements and connected by uh, some and or etc. So uh, let's see an example like all primes are either even or odd. So this contains two statements which are all primes are either even And the second statement is all primes are either odd. So we have two statements here. First says that all primes are either even, and the second prime says that all primes are either odd. So these particular two statements are joined by either and or to make a compound statement. Next, we look into uh, various different con connectives which are used to form compound uh, sentence, compound statements. So the most common are and and or so uh, to look into uh, this is a particular statement which says that 42 is divisible by 5 6 and 7 so we have the um, we have three statements connected by and and comma in this particular statement so we uh, it's these uh, the different components of this particular uh, statement are that 42 is divisible by 5, 42 is divisible by 6 and 42 is divisible by is divisible by 7. So these are the three different components of uh, the uh, statement of this particular statement uh, compound statement. Next uh, next we look into how to uh, 
say whether a compound statement is true or false which contains end as the connective so uh, to there's a basic rule that if uh, the each of the individual components of the compound statement that is this individual statement if all of them are true then we say that the compound statement is true otherwise it's false the uh, exam as an example let's say we have uh, this particular compound statement a mixture of alcohol and water can be separated by chemical methods so we have um, two statements here and these two particular statements are true so we uh, individually are true a mixture of alcohol can be separated by chemical methods so we have this statement and this misstatement so basically these individually they are true so we have the compound statement as true here also as you can see this is a this was a compound statement using and and you had in the individual components as true uh, individual components this particular component is true this particular component is true but this component is false so basically this particular statement will come out to be false next we move on to another connective that is or so we could have two types of or the first one says uh, is the exclusive or for example two lines in a plane either intersect at one point or they are parallel so compound statement with or is true if any of it is true or false otherwise that that says that if uh, uh, let's say we have two components of the compound statement with or then we see that if E, if any of the particular statement is true then we say that the complete statement is true otherwise it's false for example uh, the two components of this particular statement says two lines the first uh, let's say first line first statement says that two lines in a plane either intersect two two lines in a plane intersect so this can be true so basically this can be true sorry um, two lines in a plane intersect so basically this is a true statement so we have this particular statement true even before we go on move on to the next other uh, next or the other state part of this particular comp compound statement for uh, let's see um, now the definition of exclusive or so exclusive or comes when we have uh, the we have to choose either the first part or the second part we cannot have both the part as true so either uh, now let's uh, for this for in this example if we have two lines in a plane we could have them meet or they could be parallel so only one of the choices are true for that is that, that thus this or is exclusive in the second statement we see the defini the definition of inclusive or in this particular case we could choose both the particular statements both the particular statements uh, individual statements can be true or uh, one of them may be false for the in, uh, inclusive or to be uh, for uh, the use of inclusive or after we have learnt about uh, the quantifiers there are certain other phrases which are uh, after we have learnt about connectives there are certain other statements called quantifiers such as there exists and for all they have special meaning and you need to understand them uh, let's look into them through an example so uh, the first ex first example says that there exists a rectangle whose all sides are equal this means that there is at least one rectangle whose all sides are equal we see two statements just read out these two statements and think if uh, for a second if they are true or false first statement says for every positive number x there exists a positive number y such that y is less than x so let me explain what this particular statement means that for every positive x let's say we choose an x equals to 2 then we could find a y such that y is less than x that is, uh, we can choose any y less than 2. So let's choose y equals to 1. So we'll have y less than x. 
the second statement on the other hand says there exists a positive state positive number y such that for every positive number x we have y less than x so in that what we have is that let's choose a y say y uh, we have chosen the y equals to 1 then we could then we have this relation this particular relation holding for all the positive numbers which can never be true as you know if we choose y, uh, if we choose x equals to let's say we choose x equals to 1 1 itself then this particular statement turns out to be wrong so it th these two particular statements may seem to be look uh, may seem to be similar but they are not and they don't say the same thing as you have uh, as uh, it's clear from the explanation the next part is uh, that of the implications in that uh, we use the conditional statement say uh, if p then q that says that if this particular statement is true or say false we do certain thing so this these are called implications so to look at an example if a number is a multiple of 9 so the p statement or the first statement is this number is multiple of 9 and the second statement q says it is a multiple of 3 so uh, we have two components in the implications uh, statements that is first statements uh, which comes after if if p and the second statement then comes after then so we have if p then q there are uh, various ways of looking at what the implications mean and i would like you to be very familiar with all the parts because it will be helpful to solve the questions later on so the first part the uh, first uh, implication is that if p implies q then it's denoted by p and this symbol q this symbol stands for implies and this says that num uh, we can write the uh, implication statement uh, in a simpler form as a number is multiple of 9 implies that this the, that it is a multiple of 3 also so the second way of looking at implication is p is a sufficient condition for q that is if p is true that is if p is true then we can surely say that q is true next way of looking is if p only if q that says that a number is a multiple of 9 only if it's a multiple of 3 so um, this particular is a bit ambiguous and may not follow in every uh, particular instance but in general this particular thing follows that if p is true then only q is true otherwise it may not, it, it is not next thing is q is a necessary condition for p which says that for p to be true for p to be true q has to hold true otherwise p will not be true which says that uh, as you can see from the example if a multi if a number is not a multiple of 3 then it can never be a multiple of 9 simply and the last way of looking is that negation of q implies negation of p that is to say uh, through an exa through our through our example that if a number is not a multiple of 3 that is negation of q because q statement was that a number is multiple of 3 so negation will be not a multiple of 3 so if the number is not a multiple of 3 then simply it, will, it cannot be a multiple of 9 that is negation of p this particular part represents the negation of p so in this particular last part you familiarize with two most important concepts the first one is that of the negation and the second way is that of the looking at implications so basically implications are the uh, implications can be looked in five different ways